Hello grade 11 math class, welcome back to another lecture. Today we're going to talk about standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation, as given in the definition that you have, is a measure of dispersion of the data. It's a measure of how spread out our data is. If you have um, lots of data clustered very close together, you'll have a small standard deviation. And if it's very far away from each other, you'll have a large standard deviation. We are going to explore some different sets of data going to show you how to calculate standard deviation in long form today uh, and expect you to be able to do that um, and then also um, show you probably in class how to do uh, standard deviation in a easier way where we can um, kind of punch in the information and get what we're looking for. Let's jump right in. Uh, a teacher gives the same chemistry test for two different classes. Examine the mean mark um, for the first five tests. Um, okay, so let's get right into it. I've written some of this down already, but you could analyze this and you could say the range for class one is 38. The largest minus the smallest is 38. So that's a fairly large range and the mean is 78. Okay, that's a pretty decent mean mark. The range for class two is only 10. The difference between the top percentage and the bottom percentage for class two is 10 and the mean is 78.4. So although we have the same mean, the measure that we have for dispersion is a whole lot different. There's a larger range for number one than there is for number two. Uh, essentially class two is more consistent. Uh, if we were to calculate the standard deviations for these classes, um, range one, uh, or number one, class one would have the higher standard deviation and range, uh, class two would have the lower standard deviation because its range is smaller. So standard deviation is another measure essentially of range. Let's look at our five players on the basketball team and their field goal percentages in the last 10 basketball games. Anna, Patrice, Morgan, Page, and Star. Uh, the best shooting guard has been fouled out of the game, and the coach has to has the following stats to decide who sh who he should put in. Let's find out. Um, how can the coach use the data above to choose which player to substitute into the game? The first question is which player seems to be the most consistent. Um, we can look at this data kind of by eye. Uh, if we had our standard deviation, we would already know who is the most consistent, but who looks the most consistent? If you squint and you think about it, uh, it looks like Paige is one of the most consistent. Um, all of them are between 33 and 66%. 33 and 36%, sorry. Now, does that mean that she's the best shooter? Uh, that there's no one that averages a little bit more? No, but um, Paige is clearly the most consistent sticking between these two numbers. Uh, all the others have a large spread. All others have a large spread. So Paige is the most consistent, and we would also say, before we even know anything about standard deviation, Paige has the lowest standard deviation, the smallest amount of dispersion. All right, B. Determine pay, uh, the average for Paige's shooting percentage and record this value. So essentially with the average that we're talking about here, we mean the mean. So we are going to add up all her values and divide them by 10. 34 plus 35 plus 33 plus 35 plus 33, 4 plus 33 plus 35 plus 34 plus 33, and this whole thing then divided by 10. We get an average of 33.9 percent um, shooting so about a third uh, and we already know that she's very consistent this is pretty much what you can expect each and every game um, and this was actually the first step to determining what standard deviation is okay so the first step in standard deviation is finding out the mean so we have found the mean 33 0.9, that's ugly 33, 33.9 is our average, is our mean. And what we do now is we find the deviation from each 
uh, from the mean for each of her values. Um, so question C asks us to determine the deviation of each field goal percentage from the mean. So the first one, 34, deviates from the mean of 33.9 by 0.1. So I'm just going to line them up here. First one deviates by 0.1. The second one, 35, deviates by 1.1. Third one deviates again, uh, sorry, by negative 0.9. The next one deviates by 1.1 uh, again. And we can continue on like this to find all the deviations. Uh, let's see, negative 0 0.9, 0 0.1, negative 0 0.9, 1.1, 0 0.1, and negative 0.9. So these are taking these values up here and subtracting the mean and getting the difference or the deviation between them. Uh, so that is C. The next step in, st in finding standard deviation is to square all of, our, all of these values. Um, you will see as the process gets going, it is quite involved, a lot to remember, but we're going to square our, uh, these values. It's called squaring the deviations. If we square the deviations, they'll all become positive, and that's what we want. So we have 0 0.01, 1.21, 1 0.81, 1.82, 0 0.01, 0 0.81, let's put down here, 1.21, we have 0 0.01 and 0 0.81. So we have then squared all of these numbers to get um, the squares of the deviations and the last little bit to do is to add them all together um, and get the average so if we add all of these together we would get let's just rip this off and move this up So we've squared the deviation, now E, determine the standard deviation of Paige's data by determining the square, the mean of the squares of the deviation, so the average of the deviations. So we add those up and divide by 10, we would get, so 6.9 divided by 10 is 0.69. That is the average of the squared deviations. And our last step is to square root that. So we take uh, the square root of 0.69 to get our standard deviation, which is 0 0.830. So this is a measure of how far off we might expect Paige to be um, from her average in each game. So within a percentage point, Paige is extraordinarily consistent to be within a percentage point um, most of the time. Uh, our next question, yes, asks us to do the same thing for Anna. So I'm going to make a table and hopefully this will make it more straightforward for us to see. So Anna, percent, we have the deviation and the deviation squared. Okay, I've got my columns. Anna's percentage is listed here, 36, 41, 43, 39, 45, 27, 40, 37, 31, and 28. And I got that from the table of data. Uh, the mean for Anna is 36.7. You can't see that. The mean for Anna is 36.7. You also can't see that. Where can I write it that you can see it? There, that's the mean. So we are going to find the deviation from the mean for each of these values. 36 is 0.7 away from the mean. 41 is 4.3, 43 is 6.3, 39 is 2.3, 8.3 for 45, negative 9.7 for 27. We have 3.3 for 40. 0.3 for 37, negative 5.7 for 31, and negative 8.7 for 28. We then square each of these numbers. So 0 0.49, 18.49, 39.49, 38.49, 5 68.89, 94.09, and 89.09. 
32.49 and 75.69. So that's each of these values squared. We then total them up. So we add all of these values up and divide by the number that we have. So if we add all of those numbers up, we get 346.1. So we take that 346.1 and we divide it by 10 to get 34.61. And our last step is to square that. So we take, or this is the square root, sorry, take the square root of 34.61 to get a standard deviation of 5.88 percentage points. This value, 5.88, is much larger than Paige's value. Paige's value we found to be 0.830. So that is small. The standard deviation is small. The measure of deviation or dispersion is small for Paige, but much, much larger uh, for Anna. Um, this next question, G ask you to use a calculator that you don't have. I'm going to show you this in class, how to use uh, input data to get um, standard deviation values. Um, but we could write these out. Um, let's see. You know what? We'll do this part in class. Remind me in class, and I'll show you how to find the standard deviation for each of those. So in class as a reminder for us to do that. Um, and we can do H actually, even though it requires us to, it wants us to do G first. If we compare the means and the standard deviations, what does a low standard deviation imply about that player? Well, low standard deviations, low standard deviations, they always imply consistency. That is the key. They are always consistent. They are always the same or very close to the average at all times. Okay, so standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion. Uh, let's go to I. Um, based on your analysis, would you put in Paige or Anna? Uh, I'll just say this one. Uh, I think that they both have value. You know, if Paige, if you know how many points you need, you can put her in, you know that she's going to get that. But Anna seems to have a little bit of a higher uh, possibility, able to get more points. So I think it is a personal choice for the coach depending on what you want and that situation. But standard deviation gives you more information to use and make that decision. Uh, and then question J. Question J uh, asks us to explain the equation that you see right here. This is not in your notes. Okay, there is no question G. I've made some uh, changes since I've done my own. So please forgive me. There is none of these. We don't need to worry about that. If you're confused, you're not alone. All right. Let's ch check out uh, this example using standard deviation for sunflower seeds. So we have small bags and large bags. Uh, the mean, which I'm going to write as x bar, something for you to new for you to remember. That just means the mean is 227.15 grams with a standard deviation of 5.227 grams. Um, the other bag, 454 gram bags, have a mean of 454.4, so that's good, and a standard deviation of 4.498 grams. All right, how can standard deviation be used to determine the accuracy of measurements in each bag? Uh, if we check this out, we can see that although the amount is larger for the large bag, the standard deviation is smaller. So the large bag is much more consistent in its dispersion and how many you get compared to the small bag. So maybe the large bag is uh, the better buy. You know, it is more consistent and you get more, you know what you're going to get. Um, that is the key, that a smaller standard deviation means more consistency. Uh, what I'd like you to do is explain why the standard deviations are different even though the ranges uh, of masses are the same, uh, and how might that deviation be used by the company that sells sunflower seeds. So you can pause it here, and come back and we will quickly go over it. Um, 
So although the standard deviations are different, even though the ranges of the masses are the same, um, the you would expect a larger deviation um, from a larger sample. So um, the other the other values are just closer to 454. So other values are more consistent, even though the ranges are the same, the other values are more consistent for the 454 gram bag. And you might be able to use this to establish some quality control. Quality control is really, really important, especially when talking about food and services. So you may be able to say, um, you know, we can guarantee that you'll have at least 450 grams of sunflower seeds in your package. So acceptable ranges for quality control. Very, very important. And we have our last example. Again, uh, we're going to lay out the information that you need so that you don't have to um, use it to find information to find the standard deviation yet. Um, but this is information for males that was given. So the mean for males for video games um, is 12.8 hours and the standard deviation is 2.16 hours. While for females, we can find from our information that we have above in our table, the standard deviation, uh, or sorry, the mean is 8.94 hours for females, and the standard deviation is 2.78 hours. Um, so we can compare the results of the surveys for males and females and how they play video games. Um, you can see that the standard deviation for females is larger than the standard deviation for males. So females are less consistent when they play video games for the amount of time that they play them, while males are more consistent um, and they often play more on average. Okay. Um, so there are lots of problems for you to do. Uh, there is the key ideas and then there's going to be lots of comparing standard deviations. Um, we are going to go over uh, how to find standard deviation with technology, but the process for finding standard deviation, where you find the difference from the mean, you square that deviation, add them up, uh, find the average of those, and square root it is a uh, something that I'm going to expect you to be able to do. So practice, 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 and ask lots of questions. But thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon.